Well, let's see if we can make these two lines parallel. I've got two angles here, and their position, well, that looks to be that of the corresponding angles. So I know that if these two angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. My postulate's right there. Again, postulate 16, if corresponding angles are congruent, the lines are parallel. That means I set these two expressions equal to each other, and then just solve for x, and I'm done. Well, here's another case where I'm looking at corresponding angles. We need to recognize those. So in order to make these two lines parallel, well, I'd have to have these two angles congruent, corresponding angles, that would make the lines parallel. So we would just have to set these two expressions equal to each other and solve for x, and we're done. Well, let's make our lines M and N parallel again. This time we've got two angles that are not corresponding. They're not alternate interior. They're not alternate exterior. They are consecutive interior. They're not going to be congruent. We have to watch this. They need to be supplementary. So add these two expressions together, set them equal to 180, and that's going to give you your parallel lines. So I suppose we can just do some algebra. I have a variety of ways to do it. I'm going to subtract the 150, then I'll add the 15, and then divide. And we're done. Okay, now our transversal is horizontal, and I see that I've got alternate exterior angles. And we know if we're going to make those lines parallel, we're going to have to set these two alternate exterior angles congruent. So x is equal to 180 minus x. And when I solve that, oh, a rather boring conclusion, x is 90. So in fact, these happen to be equal. And, and we've got perpendicular lines. That's just a coincidence. But in this case, x is 90. Okay, here we go with a horizontal transversal. These two angles are on the interior between M and N. So, of course, they're going to be consecutive interior angles. They need to be supplementary, or in other words, this plus this adds up to 180, and that would make the lines parallel, and you're done. Now, one confusing thing. I know in your textbook the picture looked like this, which is just plain crazy. I mean, they're just showing you 2x is smaller than x. So you can't trust the relative picture. You've got to go by what you're given. This is 2x, this is x. So this is the bigger angle. And your authors should have really drawn it like that. Well, again, our transversal is horizontal. These angles are on the interior, but they're on alternating signs of the transversal. Makes them alternate interior angles. So if this is true, if the angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. And then I guess I'm going to set it up this way. That's theorem 3, 4, alternate interior angle converse. And we've got our equation. And pretty straightforward, subtract 2x from both sides. x is 20. Now let me show you a little something. Now, and I know this just like the last one. A little confusing because I know that these are both, therefore, 60 degrees. 320s are 60. Um, 220s plus 20 is also 60. It checks out OK. That's how you know you did it right. Um, but I know your textbook had a picture like that. So again, beware of the pictures. Um, they may not really reflect your true answers. Oh, I love these error analysis problems. You're given this picture and saying, well, the, the student's trying to say that A is parallel to B. And um, well, why is this wrong? Well, the only thing we've got here is this. In each case, we've got our theorem 2.6 telling us that we've got vertical angles congruent. Well, we knew that without having the x and the x. I mean, x degrees is equal to x degrees, y degrees is equal to y degrees. Unless we're told that x is equal to y, we've got nothing here. So, in fact, if I were to take this drawing and move it like this, and move it like this, it is in fact the same drawing. Because you can see, I've got x and x, I've got y and y and there's no relationship between the two of them. 